Babyface Nelson. Navigating the dangerous landscape of organized crime in the turbulent years of the Great Depression in the 1900s, Babyface Nelson became one most notorious gangsters in FBI history. Born as Lester Joseph Gillis, Babyface Nelson came into the world on December 6, 1908, in the gritty city of Chicago, Illinois. into poverty, young Lester faced the harsh realities of life from an early age. His family life was marked by financial struggles and instability, and he was raised in a rough neighborhood, where he quickly learned to fend for himself on the unforgiving streets of Chicago. As a teenager, Lester found himself drawn to a life of crime. thefts and burglaries became his early escapades, providing a means to survive in a world that seemed stacked against him. But despite his troubled upbringing, what truly set him apart was his youthful visage. On April 21st, 1930, he carried out his first bank robbery, making away with approximately $4,000. Just a month later, he and his gang successfully obtained $25,000 worth of jewelry through home invasions. On October 3rd, Nelson targeted the Itasca State Bank, stealing $4,600. A teller later positively identified him as one of the perpetrators. Three nights after this, he seized the jewelry of the wife of Chicago mayor valued at $18,000. Describing her assailant, she remarked, he had a baby face, was good-looking, hardly more than a boy. Becoming widely known as Babyface Nelson, he entered the criminal underworld of Chicago. The city was in the grip of prohibition, a time that fueled the rise of organized crime. Nelson's association with notorious figures like John Dillinger and Al Capone marked a turning point in his criminal track. The turbulent alliances forged in the shadows of speakeasies and backroom deals propelled Nelson into a world of more audacious criminal enterprises. Nelson became an integral part of the infamous Dillinger Gang, a group known for its brazen bank robberies and daring escapes. The collaboration with seasoned criminals heightened Nelson's profile and increased the stakes of his criminal activities. The media, always hungry for sensational stories, seized upon Nelson's youthful appearance and his propensity for violence, making him a headline-grabbing figure. High-profile bank heists became the modus operandi for Nelson and his associates, as they struck fear into the hearts of law-abiding citizens and law enforcement alike.
but despite his criminal lifestyle, Nelson was known to be fiercely protective of his family. He and Helen Warziniak got married in 1931 and had two children in a home he truly cherished. She, however, was also reported to be an active member of her husband's criminal activity. One of the most notorious events was the Battle of Barrington in 1934, a violent confrontation with the FBI that showcased Nelson's willingness to engage in shootouts with the authorities. There, he killed two FBI agents and wounded several others. The media's portrayal of Nelson as a dangerous and unpredictable criminal only added to his notoriety. The head of the FBI back then intensified efforts to bring down Nelson and the Dillinger gang, viewing them as a significant threat to public safety. As the net closed in on baby-faced Nelson, he found himself thrust into the perilous life of a fugitive. Escaping from prison marked a pivotal moment in Nelson's criminal career, setting the stage for a relentless cat-and-mouse game with law enforcement. His ability to change identities and seamlessly blend into the criminal underworld allowed him to elude capture and continue his life of crime. Nelson's time on the run was marked by a series of daring escapades, each one more audacious than the last. Forming new alliances within the criminal fraternity, he collaborated with various underworld figures, navigating a labyrinth of deceit and loyalty. Despite the constant threat of capture, Nelson's criminal activities intensified, with a string of bank robberies, kidnappings, and violent encounters defining his fugitive years. Law enforcement faced significant challenges in capturing Nelson. His unpredictable nature and ability to stay one step ahead made him a formidable adversary. Nelson was listed as public enemy number one by the FBI, a designation reserved for the most notorious criminals of the time. His criminal activities and violent nature made him a top priority for law enforcement. The nationwide manhunt led by the FBI showcased the lengths to which authorities were willing to go to apprehend one of the most notorious criminals of the era. the toll of a life on the run began to manifest in Nelson's personal life. Relationships strained under the constant pressure, and the constant threat of violence took its toll on his mental state. Despite the hardships, Nelson remained a formidable force in the criminal underworld a symbol of defiance against a society grappling with economic hardship and social upheaval. As baby-faced Nelson continued his life on the run, the relentless pursuit by law enforcement reached a climax in the infamous Battle of Little Bohemia. The confrontation unfolded in April 1934, when Nelson and his associates sought refuge at the Little Bohemia Lodge in Wisconsin. 
The FBI, armed with newfound intelligence, closed in on the location, leading to a tense standoff. The ensuing shootout between Nelson's gang and law enforcement became a pivotal moment in the criminal's life. The intensity of the battle, coupled with Nelson's determination to evade capture, created a chaotic scene. Bullets flew, and the lodge became a battleground as law enforcement sought to bring an end to Nelson's criminal reign. Despite his notorious reputation, Nelson's luck ran out on this fateful night. The Battle of Little Bohemia marked the beginning of the end for babyface Nelson. In the chaos of the firefight, Nelson attempted to escape but he was ultimately shot multiple times by FBI agents. Mortally wounded, he was apprehended and transported to a hospital, where he succumbed to his injuries on November 27, 1934. The aftermath of Nelson's death reverberated through the criminal underworld and law enforcement circles. His demise served as a cautionary tale of the consequences of a life of crime, even for someone as audacious and elusive as Babyface Nelson. The events of that night had a lasting impact on law enforcement's strategies for combating organized crime during a tumultuous period in American history. Meanwhile, a death order was released for Nelson's widow. Helen roamed the streets of Chicago as a fugitive for several days, being portrayed in the media as America's first female public enemy. After turning herself in on Thanksgiving Day, Helen, who had been granted parole following her capture at Little Bohemia Lodge, underwent a year-long prison sentence for harboring her deceased husband. Helen passed away in 1987. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and click that notification bell. This is Ben saying, see you next time.